To add some spice to our videos, I've set myself up for a bit of a challenge in this particular review. I've used the word big to describe large American SUVs and pickup trucks in the past. In fact, I've used it many, many, many times, too many times, in fact. So throughout this entire review, I gotta think of a different word to describe this hulking freedom machine. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the 2024 Chevrolet Tahoe Z71. And I promised Jack and Earl that I would put money inside the swear jar every time I use the word big. You just said it two times already. That doesn't... Pay I just... up. Pay up. Y'all trying to get lunch money out of me. To find the price of this car, or any car for that matter, whip out the AutoDeal app, which is available on Android and iOS, and it will tell you that, yep, the Tahoe tops out at 8,700,000 Philippine pesos. But that's not the model that we have here today. This is actually the more affordable one, because it's the Z71. Affordable. This comes in at 7,700,000 Philippine pesos. Now, whether it's worth that price or not, I'll get to a little bit later. But for now, I can tell you that that is a lot of money inside the swear jar. This, after all, is going to be a very big, huge investment. No. I, I said huge. No. This behemoth is moved by a 5.3 meter all-American V8 that pushes out 355 horses, 518 newton meters of torque, and is mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission with an automatic four-wheel drive system. And by golly, it sounds like an American dream when you start her up. Now that little bit cost us a pretty fortune on our budget because well, the fuel consumption of this car isn't anything great. Inside the city, heavy traffic, we were doing about 2.5 kilometers per liter. When it got a little bit better, 3.5 kilometers per liter. Yay! On the highway, I guess a little better at 10.5 kilometers per liter. So that would actually be even worse if Chevy didn't equip this car with an Ecotech system, which is to say that it has a start-stop function, that's one, when you're stuck in traffic, and two, when you don't need all eight cylinders, what it does is it shuts down four cylinders and it runs basically just on four cylinders. And those are the only ones that are consuming fuel. So this car, when it's traffic, could do better, but I'm telling you that fuel consumption is great. Fuel efficiency, not so much. Surrounding that engine is mountainous proportions of goodness knows what. Look at the front grille. This grille is so large that it'll make George Foreman blush. Look at it. Then you've got macho cuts and whatnot all over it. LED headlamps. Even the tow hooks found down below are nice and red. Kind of gives it a gnarly feeling, doesn't it? Now down the side, it's going to take me some time to get to the end of this car, which is already hugely impressive because the Tahoe is essentially the younger brother or the smaller brother of the Suburban. And the Suburban in turn to the Tahoe is the elongated version of this car. Now to put everything into numbers, the Tahoe is 5,352 millimeters long, 2,057 millimeters wide, and 1,928 millimeters tall. Its wheelbase is 3,071 millimeters. It rolls on 20-inch wheels wrapped in 285 50 series all-season tires. It has 203 millimeters of ground clearance, which you can raise up to 252 millimeters with the help of air suspension. And as for the look of it all, well, the wheels are two-tone. You have repeaters on your side mirror, a behe massive Z71 badge on the side, one of the largest fuel caps I've ever seen, a step board, and if you go up on your tippy toes, you can see an offset shark's fin antenna. Why offset? I don't know. 
Now, the rear of the Tahoe continues to be big and boxy. <coughs> Much the same as the front. If these lights were on any other car, a smaller car, then it wouldn't look good. But here, on something as icebergish as the Tahoe, then yeah, it definitely does work. You can open her up in several ways. You can press a button, if I can find it here. Yeah! to open up the glass so that you can reach in very, very easily if you've got, let's say, for example, a cooler inside the back. Uh, but when you do decide to open her up, the power tailgate will reveal, get this, with the third row in play, you're looking at over 700 liters of space. 700 with three rows. Goodness gracious. When you fold the second row, you're looking at over 2,000 liters of space. And then when it's completely flat, which it can do, you can get over 3,400 liters of space. And I gotta tell you, I honestly did not bring enough balik bayan boxes. I should have brought a swimming pool, but I couldn't find it at home. Mm. There are also other toys back here, including tie-down uh, clamps on the side. You have a 12-volt socket, like I said, or rather not a 12-volt socket. This is a 220 outlet, just in case you've got, let's say, a cooler or something that needs to be powered. And buttons here that fold the third row like such. Aha! Power. And then if you want to tumble the second row without you having to go up there, all you got to do is click twice. It's supposed to work. It works! Oh, look at that! It's flat! Wow, that really is flat. And it doesn't even have a lip too. In fact, it kind of goes up. So if you're living, lifting heavier items, you can just push it all the way to the front. You know, during the next school year, if it's ever brown out or whatnot, I can have Antonio and Alessandra bring their desks in here and they can study from inside this car. Look at the size of this thing, man. Look at this. I can spread out and sprawl out. You can go on a camping trip. You can, do, did you just, Earl Naman, come on, dude. This guy, this guy, I tell you, this guy. So sorry. No, you're not. <laughs> Getting in and out of the third row is not an issue at all because the seats do obviously tumble forward. Now, this is an extremely generous amount of space that you're giving the third row, but it can back up thanks to the rails that are found down below. I gotta tell you that there are two headrests found here in the back, but there actually should be three because you can sit three people back here. I didn't realize just exactly how wide it is. I wonder if we could fit me, Earl, and Jack back here. Okay, maybe not. Toys back here include cup holders on either side. Obviously, you got seat belts. Air vents found up on top. No air controls, but you do have parcel hooks or clothes hooks up on either side. And then charging points on both sides in the form of type C. Eh? Eh? And like I said, getting out of here isn't an issue because all you got to do is press a button and boom, that thing collapses. And then you just lift this hook here and... Come on, man. I'm feeling like Superman. Ingress for the second row is obviously going to be very easy. Grab handle, step board helps a lot. Door, massive, heavy, but at least it closes very easily. This is my driving position. Uh, these seats are in the middle give position. Obviously, you can increase the space, yeah, by ever so slightly. Enough for me to definitely cross my legs. S seat three people back here. No issues, either butt size or elbow size, not going to be a problem. Toys back here include your air controls found down here below with seat warmers, only for two, actually. Uh, then you have a type C charging point, two of them, and underneath that, and another socket that is 220 volts. Your air vents are found up on top, a little bit of light, little more hooks to hang clothes and whatnot, light parcels, which I think can be a maximum of maybe two kilograms. And then, of course, a center armrest with two cup holders and a little place here to maybe even put your phone. Ah, that's nice. I would have wanted a little bit more plushness for the second row in the form of at least a sunroof or a moonroof, but here there isn't one. 
considering the price, hmm. You know, I just realized as we're getting to the front part of the car that I've been messing around and touching everything in the back, but I realized that the leather, which is the same on throughout the entire car, it's not exactly of top quality. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's not of top quality. The amenities inside are okay. Again, it's not the best, but they're just okay. In a car like this, I would have expected a little bit more, perhaps some trims around the leather, a little bit more fall wood, uh, a panoramic room, roof, uh, as I mentioned, or even a sunroof for the passenger and the driver. It's just that, well, I, it could have gotten a little better. Uh, that's not to say that the entire car is a loss. No, not at all. It's just that, yeah, I would have liked a little bit more. Just an addition of anything that I said would it be a big improvement, really. Big. But anyway, what the Tahoe lacks in perhaps a little bit of luxury, it makes up for in spades when you're talking about space and tech too. Just look at, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but the distance between me and the passenger here is quite far. I mean, it's like a titanic length. I'm exaggerating, but I can't say the word but I can't say that word. Uh, also, tech is pretty decent in here. You've got a large in, uh, instrument cluster here. You've got an eight inch instrument cluster. This is a 10 inch touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's also got a wireless charger belt down there. The, oh, the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both wireless. Um, one of the clearest reverse cameras, 360 cameras that we've ever seen. Uh, not all sunshine and rainbows. There is no gear lever, it's buttons up here. That's a little bit strange. And then the weird thing is, is that you can change gears because it is an eight speed, right? But to change gears, ten it's not- 10 speed. speed, sorry Earl, thanks Earl. It's a 10 speed, so you can't change it with a gear. You gotta press these buttons here. So uh, 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 I'm, I'm not making that sound very good. There are buttons on the steering wheel, but it's audio controls tad odd getting into the proper driving position isn't an issue because there's power seats not just for the driver but for the passenger as well and then like i said this thing's got a lot of space it's got cubby holes up the wazoo left and right to the driver a huge look the size of this thing look at how big this is what did you say uh, deep how deep this is Oh, sorry, before we before we move on, I'm uh, just brushing up some stuff for the script later. What's the nickname of New York City? The Big Apple. Yeah! Enough with the interior, enough with the chit chat. It's time to take this Big Bertha out on the road. That doesn't count that's because that's a big. proper name. That's a proper noun. Do like and subscribe to our videos because we create all of them just for you guys. Let's go. Oi, we can't be listening to music. We can't afford music. Before we, before we go, is my water bottle there? You're too big? Oh, that doesn't count! <music> Quick note before we actually set off, set off. The Tahoe's ride quality, whether you're driving or sitting in the back or even at the rear, is actually quite grand. Because of the magnetic suspension that you have in here, it's position very well that even if this is uh, an SUV it's actually very very comfortable what helps too is that you've got a powerful V8 in front but overall the the NVH in this car is just supreme really you don't expect it from such a large car now mind you regardless of how large this car is I mean it is the size of Mr. Snuffleupagus, but it moves like Mr. Speedy Gonzalez because this thing and its V8 can get you up from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in under 6 seconds. 5.9 to be exact. The sheer size of this car is also something that you really need to be prepared for if you're not going to be a passenger but rather a driver. I will say that between Earl, Jack, and I, we do have experience driving larger automobiles. But when you're stuck in traffic such as we are right now, we're crawling on, where are we Earl? Quezon Avenue. It is a little bit different in the sense that you will want to sit up high at first to be able to make sure that you fit everywhere that you go. You're unsure of the sheer length and width and girth of the vehicle. You gotta watch out for motorcycles that are passing you on the right because you're just not sure about how large the vehicle is that you will be able to overcome in time. But I'm telling you, the first time you sit in a car like this, 
don't expect to like be able to make seeing it left and right because obviously you won't and you will want to take care after all it is a bit on the pricey side Ooh, the price is something that I want to also talk about ever so slightly because had you downloaded the AutoDeal app on iOS or Android, you would have known that there is a promo on this vehicle. As much as 2 million Philippine pesos off the sticker price for the top of the line. And for this Z71, 1.3 million Philippine peso discount, which you would have only known if you had the AutoDeal app. As I already mentioned, the NVH inside this car is already good, but to add to that, the Bose system inside this car is, well, I might do it, I might do the Philharmonic Orchestra a disservice by saying that it sounds that good in here, but I think it's pretty darn close. Also, in addition to the magnetic dampers, you also have air suspension in this vehicle, which means that you can control the ride height of this car. And another cool feature is that when you park the car, it lowers to its lowest setting to, to save on the suspension so that it's not uh, peaked all, all the time. So what that does is that, uh, or rather what the air suspension does, is that it depends on what kind of terrain that you're going through. So in the city, you can ride a little bit lower to keep it as uh, planted as possible. Obviously, when you're going outdoors and you want to go to cross um, some rivers and go over boulders and whatnot, you can raise the suspension to give you a maximum ground clearance over any ruts that you might go through. So really, it feels like, it feels like the car babies you ever so slightly and that, that's not bad at all, man. There is obviously a caveat in being too tall. When you want to enter rather smaller parking garages, uh, you won't fit, right? But then the air suspension is there so it, you can lower the car and squeeze your way in ever so gently. You don't want to scratch the roof. <laughs> One question that we're probably going to get is, what's it like to drive? Is it intimidating to drive the car or more often than not, do you intimidate people on the road? Well, I'm the type of person that doesn't like intimidating people on the road. So I like to keep to my lane and um, uh, make sure that you drive properly and not force your way through traffic. And of course, use your turn signals. But if you really wanted to be intimidating in this car, it would be very, very easy because of its large engine. It's quite agile for its size and you can put your nose in almost anywhere. Are you intimidated when you drive this car? As I mentioned earlier, yes. When you first get inside this automobile, because of it's because it's so big, because it's so notorious, uh, notorious B-I-G, that doesn't count. Yes, you will be intimidated by the car, which is a good thing because then you're essentially going to be a much more cautious driver than a much more galante driver. You know what I mean? Is it hard to park? Yes, it is a difficult car to park, especially in the parking spaces of the Philippines, which are geared towards more smaller vehicles. But thankfully, the 360 camera in this car is actually quite good that if you become used to it, then it really is a great tool when it's parking, when it's time to park this vehicle. But that's really the thing about this car, its size that it really feels like it doesn't belong on Philippine roads. And that is why we absolutely love this car. But then also, there's the price. There really is something about American SUVs that gets us going. The the larger than life character it exudes, whether you're riding or driving, the excessiveness that it has inside when it comes to space, um, the unapologetic V8 engine that trundles along with little to no regard for fuel management whatsoever. It's just really all over the top. And the idea, or rather the moment that you have the an idea that you've fallen in love with the Tahoe, good luck to you. Because to be honest, you're going to need a big house with a big garage and a big bank account. Yeah, I said it. But when you do, give me a call. Because I've fallen in love with it too. Where's that jar? <laughs> <laughs>